Ready? Let's go. Let it all out. We gon' let it out. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl April Jones and my co-host Melissa Reed. And today our special guest is a personal friend of mine, someone who's extremely talented as hell. One of the <laughs> kindest people that I've actually met here in Los Angeles, Miss Tori Hart. Hello. 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 <laughs> it's crazy. I'm actually really excited to have Me Tori too. on because she um, has had so many different things that she's done that so many mm. people don't even freaking know about. The fact that you actually are a comedian and you've always been a comedian and you finally are in a position right now, right, where you are having an amazing moment. Yes. Like what? T so tell us what just happened. Oh, <laughs> but tell us what just happened. What is the thing that just kicked off? Oh, I'm excited okay. about this part. OK, well, I'm, I'm on two tours right now. <laughs> so I'm on tour simultaneously, um, you know, my tour, which is called the No Heart Feelings Tour. And then I'm also on tour with Cat Williams for the Dark Matters Tour. That's, I love yes. the name, the No Heart Feelings. Yes, No Heart that. Feelings, get up out your feelings. That's awesome, good job, So good I tell job. people all the time, get out your feelings. I love that, and this yeah. is, that's the thing. So we've been having several conversations um, in regards to what we've been dealing with and right. going through, and you know, being on Wounds yeah. in the Way and the whole concept of what we're working towards is just being able to really go back and figure out what the heck have, are we dealing with right now that right. is coming from what we were dealing with in the past, right? That we might have ignored or not looked at, traumas, triggers, all those different types of things. So you tell us, what do you think has been a wound that's been in your way of progressing forward? Like you're in an awesome space right now, but what right. have you experienced in the past that's been something that's hindered you mm -hmm. from progressing in really positive relationships? Well, you know, I would have to say for me personally, it was always putting other people's feelings before mine. You know, I was always, you know, thinking of my children, you know, thinking of my ex-husband, you know, thinking of different family members as mm -hmm. well, you know, because I was raised in a very spiritual household, yeah. um, it just family period. My grandmother, my grandmother was a minister, you know, my aunts and uncles are all ministers, they're all Christians. And so, you know, I was raised a certain way, but, you know, my beliefs don't really, you know, coincide with theirs. So just thinking like, well, gosh, what if they knew that I studied Buddhism? How are they going to feel mm -hmm. about that? You know, and, you know, I, I like Buddhism. It's a, it's a free way of thinking and it's a free way of life for me. And it's still positive, but it's just, you know, when you're raised with Christians and then you're thinking differently. Mm -hmm. So there's always putting other people's feelings before my own. Wow. For sure. So are you, yeah. do you consider yourself a Buddhist? You still study? You know, I don't consider myself a Buddhist. I like you know, Buddhism, I studied it, you know, but I, I'm just, now I'm just a spiritual being. I'm, I love God and that's it. I, I don't consider myself any, because religion is man-made. So, you know, I'm like, man made this religion. No, I'm a spiritual being and mm -hmm. God speaks to me directly. And, you know, but I do study certain religions because I like religion, but, you know, I'm not one. That's so interesting. Do you yeah. still feel like currently that's still something that is hindering you a little bit? Like, do you still consider that, like, I'm always at this moment still caring and, and having mm -hmm. to validate other people and, and is it that or is it something that you've already feel like you've crossed over? I still do it to a certain extent. Yeah. It's not as much though. You know, like yeah. so now I'll be like, you know what? Forget it. You know, forget what they gonna feel, forget yeah. what they gonna think. I don't care. You know, I'm doing me. But what's the work that you felt like you have done in order to get to that to that thought um, of not caring? I guess really it, it would be work. Like it's, you know, it's like me doing the work, like as far as me doing my comedy, as far as me doing my acting, you know, um, EP and movies. And, yeah. you know, it's just like, if, if I'm constantly worried about other people's thoughts and feelings, then I'm never going to reach that next level that I need to reach. Right. Wow. So that even comes with, you know, certain jokes that I was writing, you know, I would be careful of how I'm going to write the joke or what I'm going to talk about in the topic. Whereas other comedians, they can say whatever they want to say, yeah. you know, and not get any backlash on it. But it's like everything that I do, there's always some scrutiny surrounding it, you know? And so now I'm just like, I don't care. And why do you I think really that, don't care. Why, where do you think and why do you think that is? Well, of course it comes from because my ex-husband is one of the biggest comedians right. in the, the world right now, right. you know? So it's like, uh, don't ruffle no feathers, mm. you mm. know? And I tell him, ruffle, ruffle, <laughs> 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 you know? Because it's, it's, who cares anymore? You know, it's like everybody's scared. It's like scared of massa 
uh, you know, something yeah. like that. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, we're all here for a purpose. God all gave us purpose. And, you know, I was actually one of those people who was nervous too. Like, oh, I can't say this because I might get backlash or somebody's going to bring this up. And now I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Just be funny. And they're not going to worry about it anyway. Just be funny. You're at a different place in life anyway, though. Yeah. Because yeah. you, I think a lot of that probably had something to do with like you had children together right, you had to be right. mindful of them right and you're raising these kids and you're a mom and you're giving so much of yourself to that right they're a little older now right yes. you're about to kind of be what do they call that empty and nesting, nesting. Yeah, free. Oh, right. so in that space because you are in that position now i feel like now really is tory time yeah it's tory right? time it's, it's for sure and you know my kids are 16 and 18 and I mean, my daughter, though, she's still like my baby. No. You know, my son's still my baby. But they're they're in a different space now where they get it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't feel guilty either. I used to have that mom guilt. Yeah. I don't know if you still feel that. I do. Okay. So did you ever have mom guilt? Uh, where, yes. Okay. <laughs> so where it's just like, you know, it's like, okay, I, I turned down a lot of jobs because, you know, for one, I had got a big offer one time to do a TV show in New York. And when I told my kids about it, it was just like, no, you can't mm. move to New York. Mm. You can't do it. And I'm just like, all right, I'm sorry. I can't, can't take this opportunity, you know? And that was something that looking back now, I'm like that I should have took that opportunity and mm. just, you know, told their dad, listen, help. this is where whatever help you got over on your side of things, yeah. they're going to have to just be with you full time because, I should have took that opportunity. And that was one opportunity that was mom guilt. I don't feel mom guilt anymore. anymore you know? Which is why you're kind of ready to soar, right? Yeah, it's that yeah. time. Now yeah. there are so many people, yeah. not, I don't wanna say so many people, but it's out there, where some people are saying, you're in a position where you're, tech, where you're working with the ops is right. what I, I'm hearing, right? Because right. of the fact that we, you know, Cat Williams did this whole segment on another podcast mm -hmm. that is, super took off right, yeah, right and this is bringing a lot of traction because he was giving a lot of like these different like just putting some of the comedians out there which mm -hmm. your your former husband was one that they talked about right and now you have this awesome opportunity to work with cat williams <laughs> on this tour and so right. people are saying oh tori you're working with the ops but tori's like this is an this opportunity is my time. Like, right <laughs> like and what am i supposed to say no <laughs> You know, because of beef between girls, between between two men, like I ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, but this is the thing, though. So, in some circumstances, I would say, yeah, some people are supposed to say no in certain circumstances. I feel okay. like this might be not one of those circumstances, in my opinion. And I know, right. I'm just saying that because you just explained that you've had all of these times that you have done the mom guilt, right. you've done the let me take care of him guilt, right. let me look out for other people guilt. They're grown, they're older, they have their careers yes. already set. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they've helped you with your career at right. all in right. the past. And and if if they if that maybe didn't happen, now you're like, I got me. But may I just <laughs> say, like, she's a sing she was a single mom, you know, moved on with her life, had whatever, got a divorce, whatever. Yeah. He's remarried. Right. She is on her own. So if she has an opportunity, this is what just what I feel, right. an opportunity where it's presenting itself no one's a factor here. It is about self at this point. And I think we as women have to start taking those opportunities and not sitting here and being guilty or feeling like, well, I feel bad that no, because these men, sorry, y'all going to take them jobs. <laughs> yes. Y'all going to take them jobs. Y'all not considering. We got to watch y'all's kids. Y'all not considering. We got money to make too. So what about the women who are single moms who are presented with real life opportunities? This right. is huge. Right. This is a big deal. You can't turn that down for what people create a, a false narrative of right. oh you're working with the ops yeah no and you've already had that I, that's what no my my position with that is just you've already done that you've done the mommy mm -hmm. you've done the wifey mm -hmm. you've watched and made sure everyone else was okay and right. in the circumstances like it's my time and yeah. you felt that release mm -hmm. to do that right and do you do you feel like that's going to be um it will will that cause any type of challenge or friction in the co-parenting concept for your family um, dynamic? 
it, it, it will, yeah. you know, but I, it'll, it'll be okay. Yeah. You know, it'll be okay. Everybody will be fine. Okay. <laughs> you know, I had to be fine. Yeah. You yes. know, I had to be fine through a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. I had to be fine. I had to endure being the brunt of jokes. I had to endure watching somebody move on and, and do a whole thing with my children and create a, a new family. And I had to watch and, you know, deal with that. So I think everybody will be okay. Yeah. And this isn't that. Yeah. At this, all. This isn't. This isn't this nowhere is... near that. This is me getting on stage and telling some jokes, okay? And, you know, doing what I love to do. Why can't I do what I love to do and what you... at, a, at that level? Yeah. Because now I'm in arenas. I, before, I was trying to tell <laughs> jokes in, in, in chicken shacks and, you know, uh, down the street at Bob's, Bob's bungalow house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no. I now... Cat has given me an opportunity to perform in arena. And this isn't the first time he's given me this opportunity. Let's be clear. Me and Cat have been friends for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We're so close that Cat has watched my dog. And it's a pit bull on top of that. Wow. Okay. He's babysat my dog for me. You know, um, putting me on different shows. We've done a movie together. We are friends. So this whole thing is not that. Yeah. Well, at we all. commend you, Cat. Yeah. Just by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's yeah. crazy that's so good and it's good that that you even expressed that because the narrative that's going could right. be other things yeah that's inaccurate so at least you a lot of people think they know what they don't know absolutely you know that they, they constantly think they know something and they have no idea yeah mm. and no wait, idea for for that um because i i know your heart a little bit also no pun intended but i know okay. your heart a little bit <laughs> where nice. in the sense that i don't believe that the tour that you're doing and all the jokes that you write mm -hmm. are going to be to anyone else's demise. Never. Like nothing negative mm -mm. towards any person. People can't, shouldn't expect to come out and hear jokes about like past crazy situations. They or, might. Oh, okay, well, y'all, oh. <laughs> well, you might. That might be what they it is. They might hear some craziness okay. and that's okay. You know, it's it, they might hear some craziness, they might not. Okay. It depends on the night. Because I, you know, some nights I just talk about certain things, some nights I don't, you know, but there's no hard feelings. That's the cool you thing know? about your comedy mm. is that it's not always scripted. It's more interactive uh, with <laughs> Is that a real comedian if all your stuff is scripted? That's cool. How easy is that? That means you're an actor, mm. not a comedian. Real. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, that makes well, sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, so being able to add in like <laughs> all of that. Not, not, uh, I'm an actress. <laughs> well, no, I'm, no, I'm no, like, no, 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 I'm just mean, playing. I know, I know. I that's a joke. I mean, and if you're going to be a real like Richard Pryor and, you yeah. know, comedian, like, like I like comedians like you know richard pryor yeah. dick gregory you know i i go dig back into the crates you know back yeah. and eddie murphy's from the beginning you know e even dave Chappelle, you know he's not mm -hmm. scripted mm -hmm. um you know you gotta come raw because what if somebody tell you you know you ask the audience member hey i need you to throw me something and then it's just like okay you like okay you can't you know you gotta figure out ways to new and, and hecklers so you gotta have the stuff for hecklers you you just always have to yeah yeah, yeah. That's a scary. Like it's I just got anxiety. Just her, like <laughs> the scariest part for I commend her on that because the scariest part is how do you even get up, know what to say, get I would have I would literally be like the <laughs> we did I, like cause I, you know I can be funny and people have literally said April you can you should right. be a comedian I'm like right. how she's right. funny when she's not trying I, we yeah, did wild and out one time we did wild and out and they were sharing some stuff and she was like okay I can say this I got an idea in my mm -hmm. head all the ideas went out the window because oh. when she got on stage it was like wait I just want to be me Tori yeah. and be funny <laughs> like, is, do you know how hard it is to do comedy like it's not easy so it's like how dare you think I'm going to just grab a mic and go perform in front of 10,000 people? Well, it's been mm -hmm. a thing that people have said that you've written certain jokes right, for right. your ex-husband, right. right? Maybe you helped because that's what we help, do as women course, or yeah. whatever like I'm, that. I'm a great help me. <laughs> yeah, you have, yeah. Uh, and you are. I'm a have great Have you help also me. written jokes for anyone else that's been in the entertainment industry that we don't know about? I have. I have. We ain't spilling that. No, because, oh. you know, I'm not a... I, that, then that would really be me being like an op or something like that. I was like, and then <laughs> God, like, Yeah, no, you're not supposed to do that unless the person says it's okay. Yeah. You know, you just really never... You, you know, everybody yeah. has a team. Yeah. And that's another thing. Let's not get it twisted. People has helped me with my material, mm. you know, and I welcome it. Like I could be on stage and then they'll be, you know, they'll say, sorry, I got this punch up for you, this tag when you, you know, when I get off and I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's I music. like that. Yeah. You know, and that's OK. Like, it's OK to get help. That's another misconception. People, you know, nah, I write all my lyrics, you know, son, yeah. rappers. No, you don't. You have a team, too. You know, stop lying. 
There's everybody gets some type of help. And if you don't get help, why not? Like that's stupid to do everything on your own yeah. when you can get some type of help. So, yeah. I feel like that's a life lesson right there. Like we were right. talking about, that was bars right there on its own. Get, yeah. It's okay to get it's help. It's okay to get in help. In life, in real life, for real, it's okay. You can't do this alone. That's why they say right. it takes a village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then it's almost like the concept goes out the window when you do have the village to help you. Like it's well, so it's like weird. People that be like, I don't never sleep. Like, why not? <laughs> okay, don't you get tired? Why aren't you sleeping? What are you doing for yeah. your body? Like, why don't you want to get some sleep? I don't get it. I love this because yeah. that's, again, we are always talking about like within the, within the entertainment industry, these narratives that are said, these certain types of concepts that we have mm -hmm. that we shouldn't. Let's release yeah. that. It's okay to sleep. Right. It's okay not to be busy. It's okay not to be working right the second. It's right. okay you to broke. have friends right? that okay. are going to help yeah. you and pour into you so right, that you have right. enough to give to the world. Right, right. That's and accept good. that, you know. Everybody's not out to get you. Yeah. You know, it's like, this, it's just this misconception with a lot. Yeah. So. What would you say to someone else who's struggling in a similar situation? where you or for what you've kind of overcome where you're at right now mm -hmm. where you're finally like it was a sacrifice for me to step back and say i know what i might face right. within my family within the public with whatever that dynamic it's tory time and it's time for me to stand up for myself like what would you say to someone else who's struggling to do the same or make that same type of decision um i would say you know make sure you're ready Boom. because you don't want to do something and then have regrets. Mm. So really make sure you're ready in that space, you know, and, and it does take spiritually being grounded for me. That's what it took for me. I can't speak for everybody else, but for me, I know it took me, you know, my spiritual life had to be a hundred percent in order, you know, um, my endeavors, you know, building my brand for years, I, everything has been in order for me now to go to the next level because there's levels. You know, and every level you're going to face, as they say, a new devil. And you, so you have to be ready mentally, physically, spiritually. You have to be ready. So just make sure you're ready. How, how did you know you were ready? I just knew. Like, why now? I, I just knew. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't hesitate. Like, you know, when they offered me an opportunity, I was like, let's do it. Oh. I didn't hesitate. I didn't stop to think about it. It was just like, I'm so ready because I had been doing all the work. Well, I was going to say, so do you think if presented with the same situation back then, it wouldn't have been the same I answer? probably would have been like, no, yeah, no. because, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I probably, you know, would not have been ready. Like, you know, when you're ready. Yeah. You know, we all know we can try to pretend sometimes, but we know when we're ready. Yeah. You know when it's your time. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's your time. Right. And the creator, you know, God, yeah. creator. Um, he's going to let, let you know too, like God speaks to me. I speak to God and you know, I listen, um, I get insight and I know for sure that it's time. Mm. So just make sure, you know, it's time. I like that. Yeah. 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 It's when just it's really written. commendable to see you be someone who, cause I just feel like you too, like we've gone through things or like the public, like living in the public mm -hmm. eye and being with someone who is known to somebody and then just right. being the little old woman right. who is just like <laughs> dating this person. And it's like, but you got so much going on. You've right. had to endure so much publicly and still be able to be a great mother, still be right. able to wake up in the morning and push through your days, still be able to still have enough strength to work and be and be be in a be position sane. well be in a position to you're a comedian right. that's a lot of energy to have right to make to make people smile and make people happy right and i don't think people understand that dynamic so it's like you should be commended and giving your flowers for oh, being able to do that i don't i don't think that as women as human beings we do that right. enough like it's hard like i only can know when i wake up in the morning and my struggle and when i shit was very public for me it was like when is going in <laughs> okay okay and then when you cross right. the threshold it becomes right. like <sighs> yeah I can yeah. breathe there is a release now and I feel like that's where you are and yeah. I feel like you now know that this is the moment for you to just kind of like flourish and take off and yeah. fly and congratulations at arriving thank you thank <laughs> for real it's, it's, I mean, cause I remember, you know, when you were going through your thing and, yeah. and me and I'm looking like, leave her alone. Like she is doing her thing. She's living her life. Like people be too invested. And we know it's all part of entertainment. Right. It's, it's part of the game, you know, but that's why I say you mentally and physically and just spiritually, you have to make sure you have that grounding because if you don't, it will chew you mm. up and spit you right. 
Um, right. And, and and it's not for the weak. It really is not. Entertainment is not for the weak. Like, so for, you know, people who's always got something to say, like, I wouldn't choose this on nobody. Mm. You know, I choose to do this because I love it. Right. I actually, I love it. I love being, you know, ex extending energy. I love, you know, uplifting. I love it because somebody else can reap the benefits of me, you know, sacrificing my, myself, yeah. you know, to pour really into others. Reward. Right, right. That's amazing. It's yeah. it's so interesting because I see the, the similarities in the two of you. Yeah. And having, I love, Tori, that you said the way you know is because you need to stay grounded and connected to God. And right. then you know that you're ready because I feel like even in just watching April, what mm -hmm. you were just talking about, like mm -hmm. how I saw the stuff you was going through, like, girl, right. so that was just two months ago, right? So she just, I mean, she, got, <laughs> she has her moments, but two right. months ago, she had a situation where, you know, a lot of people didn't know her dad had just passed away. Right. She had a crazy circumstance happen, something even similar to your circumstance, where she she and, you know, the father of her children had an amazing, like, they were starting to connect back together, right. oh, co-parenting, right. all that stuff. They were going on trips together. The kids right. were loving it. Oh. And then <clears throat> it, just out of nowhere, there was a, a circumstance that happened where the narrative, the old narrative popped back up again. And it thrusted her into it was a it was a shock factor. And it was like, right. wait, I thought we were past this. Right. I don't want to get back there. And I feel like same thing kind of right. for you right. where, you know, you guys just spent Christmas together. You right. had the whole family together. Right. It's like this is going great. We can finally co-parent. I remember when it wasn't like that, right. where the co-parenting was a struggle. You were going to write a whole book about this. Right? Right. right. Did you ever get to that? No. OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so we had so but having all of that and then all of a sudden it's like, OK, now you're handed something that could potentially disrupt it a little right. bit but I know that this is where the Lord put me. I know yeah. this is what God had. And so watching her right. go through what she went through, she was like, "That's we always talk about this. The one thing that kept her grounded where she was like, I know I'm walking in the steps I'm supposed to was because of her connection to the Lord, right. her connection to God. And that, that was it. it. I know I just spoke for you, but that was no, awesome that's to good. watch. Thank you because that is so, I mean, just refining my faith. I had to, cause I was at an all time low. Right all time right. like to the point where i was like okay you know there's no one that can help me at this point i'm my battery is on complete zero percent right and in order for me to recharge at this point because i've always had to be the strong one always had but when my dad died that was to me the most failed relationship that i'd ever had in my life and i realized like okay oh that door is closed mm -hmm. Well, now, uh, right. everything else that I've tried, like that I always could control, I was completely out of control with that. But, um, well, here's the good thing. Yeah. When you hit rock bottom, you can only go up. Ooh, I know right. they say it all the time. But, uh, and it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, that's another thing. Yeah. It is okay to have those moments. Yeah. Like, that's a part of life. Like, life is not always going to be rainbows and gumdrops and cookies and no, whatever. It's, it's experiences. Right. And, and it's just how you get through it. Mm -hmm. I just but, I want to say something because you just said that th that saying of once you hit the rock bottom, you can only go up. Right. I am commending the two of you because I don't I actually think if you think about it, that's only partially true. You could stay still and not move at all and die Ooh, there. What a loser. Or you can climb and you guys are moving. You see yeah, what I'm saying? I, you're, I, you're moving. Because you got to want best for yourself. <laughs> I, you got to uh, want more. Yeah. And for people who really strive for excellence in life and for the ultimate uh, the ultimate magical type of life when when you're that person who's like no I'm not accepting this right I right, know that there is right. more I, that's fine I've met you you're a dick okay I met you yeah okay <laughs> right, like, right you know what I mean but you're constantly climbing the ladder and wanting more for yourself right. elevating in your career elevating in your friendships elevating in self elevating with your kids right when you're constantly that's Baby, I want magic. Get, but that's what you'll get. You you at that magic stage. Oh, yeah. Baby, can I, I come to a show? I'll be on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> listen, listen, man. please come. And you and you stay in your magic. You know what I mean? This like, even, so... even when you're having those moments, stay in it. Do you know how big this is for you? I feel like you're too calm. Because I'm humble. I don't, Because here's the thing, too. I ain't never going to walk around with a big head. That's no. one thing I'm not going to do. But a lot of people do, April. A lot of people do. A lot of people walk around with big heads. They get one thing, and then it can be snatched from you that easy. If you're not, I walk in humility. Because, you know, I'm coming from a place of it's my time, but I'm also coming from a place of I'm not going to switch up just because it's my time. Because there's going to be a moment where it ain't going to be my mm, time. Yeah. You know, everybody gets their moment. Because it always passes. And, and, and then it can come back. 
well, here's the thing. You, you, and you, and some people keep getting their time over and over again. And that's because you, you're putting in the work, right? Yeah. I know I'm one of those people. I'm going to constantly keep getting. I know that I've, I've been, been that way my whole life. Yeah. It'll just keep elevating. It's a, my elevation is a slow and steady pace. It ain't like a boom, you know, but um, just all the work I've done over the years under, you know, ground that people have no idea about. It's time. It's all about to come to surface. Mm. And this is just the beginning part of it. This tour with Kat. Kat, I know, thank you for blessing me, but this is just the very, very beginning. Where do you feel like that came from, though, that strength and that belief in oneself for those girls who are on the other side of this camera watching, where it's like you just sound like you're so sure and you just know, but where right. do you feel like that was instilled? Like, where does that part of you come into place? Well, my mother, my grandmother, um, mm -hmm. they're phenomenal women. My sister, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the people in my camp that has helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. And just I've always known since I was six, I told my parents what I would be doing and I'm doing it, mm. you know. So and I and I do the work. I don't ask nobody for nothing. I always am doing the work to get what I'm supposed to get. Mm. You know, there's been a few times where I when I did say, you know, I, I'm looking for work or if you have a job, can you put me on to this job? And if somebody says no, OK, cool. No biggie. Mm. But, you know, for the most part, I do the work. And I think if you do the work and you constantly grind, you'll get what you're supposed to get. You can't cheat the grind. But also, so, that's still doing the work by asking for help. That's that not, part, too. That's still yeah. doing the work. Yeah. Sometimes we need it. Sometimes we right. can't always do it by ourselves. Right, right. And a lot of times, you probably giving other people jobs and all that and giving, giving, giving. Um, so when it, when it boils down to what you need, girl, we supposed to be able to ask. We be feeling right. bad for asking. Mm. Don't feel bad to ask for what it is that you need. Right. We always say that. Ask not, have not. Have not. Although, right. I have felt bad. <laughs> but what if you <laughs> ask somebody and they be saying no? So, so sometimes it's like, we also be mindful of who you ask. Well, but sometimes you might hear no, but it's okay. The mere fact is I still asked you. The least right. they can say is no. Like, but, but maybe they, they might say yes. Guess what? If you don't ask. They're gonna say no. Right. It's no. The answer is right, no. Right. right. So at least, at least ask. At least a ask. Fifty percent chance. And reach out. Right. But it, that there might be a yes. Right. I think there's right. a good point that you made though. Is like be careful who you're asking because then there are some people that you just know are in your camp that you can reach out to and be like, hey, real quick, can mm -hmm. do you think you can just see? So maybe the other part of that is mm -hmm. on the other side. Let's be the people that can be asked. Does that make sense? And that is why I love producing. Because I love seeing people's faces when they get an opportunity. Oh. Yeah, I do. Because, you know, because it is so rewarding, you know, and you see their, and they're like, thank you. And it's just like, no problem. And, you know, I like seeing that. I like seeing it. It, it makes me feel good to be able to bless somebody. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Even at the beginning of, um, April doing this, she's like, I'm bringing all my friends on the podcast. Right, right. I'm gonna give them a moment. Before I touch any celebrity, my friends are getting to the She's yeah, like, right, hey, right. put people up, you know, give them right. a moment, let them talk, share their hearts, because whether they are entertainers or not, they've gone through something that right. can help others heal or grow there or are change. Just people that, I, to me, I feel like that are just grounded. I feel like so, there's just very few of us here in California where they're mm -hmm. like, you meet some real gems. You may not be around them all the time. You right. may not see them on a day-to-day -day basis. We right. don't hang out every single damn day. Right. Hell, right. not even year, year, year. No. But always have respect, mm -hmm. always admired, always honored, still show love through social media. Still, You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's we got to do better, though. No, we really do. We got but you get what I'm saying? Like, cause some people, some people will just be like, uh, I don't mess with that person. But there's yeah. always been something grounded to me about you where right. it's like, I ain't letting that go. Yeah. What you doing? Right. Make sure right. we get her on this podcast. Right. Like, I admire you. I admire what you have to say. And I think it's important. The things that you have to say are important. And it's not so many people that I feel that way in Los Angeles because right. it's, it's just. Because everybody's about me, me, me. Exactly. That's, that's you know, it's, and it's very unfortunate, you know. So yeah. when you do come across people, that's not just like I love Melissa because Melissa's always she's helped me with a lot Same. you know I don't even know if you realize Aww. but even I mean just you know looking out and she's always you can tell she's not a me 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 person mm -mm. you know what I mean thank you so that. you know when you and you're blessed to have her she's blessed to have you 100%. you got I love you guys mm. synergy and you know she's n nothing but always positive to say about you Thanks. so you know it's a blessing that y'all have each other that's not me 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 because yeah. like you say in LA it is that yeah for sure this is why we're doing wounds in the way guys because <laughs> yeah. it's not about us this is about 
you and the other right. people that are on the other side of this camera and pouring into and the kids that we are that we are raising and the mm -hmm. ones that really really need it and so we love you we're praying for you we are rooting for all these young kids all the moms out here all the women even the men listen we're not gonna discredit the men <laughs> but we got to give it up to the women first. Yeah. um and honestly keep healing keep on striving keep on trying to be the best you that you can possibly be let no one tell you that you can't be do don't let your 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 fears don't let your traumas don't let even what you're healing from hinder you or get in the way of what your biggest blessing is and getting to your best potential self you got this we got this we you are not alone we are all in this together we all come from different walks of life God got us. God got us. Ooh, gives goosebumps. Right. That was great. Right. <laughs>